get it seated all the way up. You just should have a very minor space or gap right there. So now that everything is free, nothing else is in there, all we have is uh, carbon. We're gonna clean that out real well. So get yourself a rag. You can use either some bike degreaser. Sometimes a rag will do it and it'll get everything out of there. Feel the surface with your finger. Make sure that there's no roughness. Make sure everything's pretty smooth. Um, if you do find you got some buildup or some type of oxidation in there, you can hit it with the very, very fine uh, steel wool just to get off the, the surface, surface debris. Same with the bottom. Once you get all that nice and clean, we're gonna go ahead and put uh, a real thin coat of grease. Now the bearings won't be sliding around in the carbon in here. It's just for more for application. So it's gonna go in nice and easy. And when you need to go back and take it out, it's not gonna be jammed in there and it'll come out a little bit easier. So go ahead and use a brush or use your finger. And you're gonna do this for the top and the bottom. All right, one of the other things too, you wanna make sure that you go back and clean off the base of your fork. Right here's the race, so this has a little tapered area right here. You can see that the metal steer tube, they actually integrated it and molded it into the carbon, so it's all nice one smooth piece. Now I'm seeing a nice smooth area right here, so your, your bearings is probably gonna rest right on there. Now if you don't, if don't see anything like this, uh, your new bearing set might come with its own race. You might have to slide that on, but this the way this is rounded, it's going into a nice curvature right there. Most likely the new bearing is just going to sit on here. You know, there's no separate race that's going to fit here. So here I have the new bearing, new sealed cartridge. These do come apart, so maybe that's probably what happened to the other one. We can go ahead and do a little test here. So we've got a flat side. Right now it's sitting on its flat side here, and then we have a little beveled edge right on this top side here. And those have different angles, so the size angle can matter. So make sure you get the correct one for that. So I'm going to put the flat side down. And right now it's it's it kind of rolls around. It doesn't feel like it's really seated properly. So there might be something else that it needs, or it could be the wrong size. All right, so we're gonna get this out of the way. Come over with our fork. It's all your new bottom bearing. Remember the tapered edge is facing upward. So this tapered edge up here is gonna meet the tapered area inside here, inside that carbon race. So go ahead and install that. Get it seated all the way up. You just should have a very minor space or gap right there. I would like to hold it up firmly, give it a little turn, making sure nothing's feeling tough or out of the ordinary. I'm gonna hold that. And we're gonna go ahead and grab our upper bearing and the angled portion is gonna be facing downward, meeting the angled bed here, so it's gonna sit nicely. It sits right in there. And you can tell we have just maybe a millimeter or two of the bearing sticking up, which is normal. And I got a little grease on the steer tube, so I'm gonna wipe that off. So when we do put our stem on, the stem is held on with friction. We want no grease whatsoever. We don't want it to slip off. And then we can go ahead with our upper dust cap slash, uh, this is a, I call it a compression ring. It's got a slit in it, so it can actually expand. It's gonna get pushed in between the steer tube and the bearing. It's gonna take this little bit of, see that jiggle right there? That's what this inner compression ring is gonna do. It's gonna take that up. This is all one piece, but sometimes you will see this as two pieces. And then inside here, there's actually a blue O-ring. It's rubber, so we need to lubricate that. You also wanna make sure that the top edge of your steerer tube is rounded. It's nice and soft. We don't have a sharp edge here, because the sharp edge here could actually cut your O-ring, which is located inside here when you slide it on, because this is gonna be pressed on, and sometimes it's tough. So make sure this edge is nice and soft. Get a, a, a file round that off and then go ahead and get a real thin coat of grease and lubricate that in So I went ahead and turned this riser spacer or dust cover, I turned it upside down. This blue portion right here, that's our little compression ring. It has a split over here, there's our split. And inside here, this blue line right here, that's actually a blue rubber O-ring. So we're gonna lubricate that, just a real thin coat of grease with our finger. O-ring inside there, it's gonna make the application a little bit easier. So this is feeling, it's feeling so-so. So after you make your cut on your steer tube, you're gonna go back and you're gonna file this edge here. We wanna take that sharpness away. Way. So most of the time you're not supposed to use a file on aluminum because it can clog up your, your little lines and threads here. But um, you might want to use one that's designated for that. You can always go back with the wire brush and clean this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit that edge. Got to hit the right angle. Go ahead and I'm going to come up because it only it's going to scrape one direction. As I'm doing that I'm going to rotate my wrist just a few times. Go ahead and turn it. You want to get all the way around and you might want to use some pressure on this otherwise you're going to be here quite a while 
basically want to go back and feel with your finger, make sure there's no sharp edge there and it should be nice rounded and smooth. And if you want to take it a step further, we can use a reaming tool. Um, this one's typically used for when you're working with copper piping. You make your cuts, you have a sharp edge with the pipe, we're, we're rounding it off. You basically clean the inside edge. We just cleaned the outside edge with our file. Now you can clean the inside, which is going to be easier with this. This has a little curvature to it with the blade. And this you're going to stick inside. And right about there, that curved edge is just kind of sitting naturally. And then you're just going to press and rotate 360 all the way around. Just like that. You can go left or right, clockwise or counter, and just use some pressure. Definitely some pressure. You want to scrape that inside out. Um, it's not completely necessary to do this, but if you want to go that extra step and make a nice clean rounded edge. In case somebody has to work with this in the future, they don't have any sharp edges that's going to cut somebody. All right, don't forget a little coat of grease. I like putting a little bit of, little bit of butter inside there. Bearings inside here already. It's staying in place. We're going to go ahead and shove that up. Okay, hold that in place, nice and firm. Come over here with your top cap, along with your, your little split compression or reducer. Get that in place. So right there, I just hit my rubber O-ring on the inside. I'm just gonna use the palm of my hand and try and, there we go, just got past that part. And what helped was that ran nice rounded soft edge with a little bit of, uh, little bit of grease on there. And we're gonna slide this all the way down. Just like that, all the way to the base. And then here you can look at your logos, see where you want your logos if you want your little, this is a Cane Creek, so we can put the Cane Creek in the front, or you can put the words 40, that's the model, or the little gecko, which I think it is. So we got 40 on the back, Cane Creek in the front, matching up with our Trek logo there. Make sure this is nice and clean, we have no grease on this area. It's gotta be grease free. And then go ahead back with our spacers. Now with this one here, I think we had one five millimeter spacer on top of our probably a 10 millimeter dust cover, bearing dust cover. I'm not sure of the proper name of that one. And then now we can go ahead with our stem. Make sure the inside of your stem is nice and clean as well. I'm gonna give that a wipe. Go ahead and put a strap on your fork, make sure that doesn't fall. I'm gonna wipe down this. Go ahead and use some degreaser if need be. Slide your fork on. All right, now we'll go back with now, we have a lot of spacers here on the top. Now, if you find this, if you see this, you have a tons of spacers on top. Why is that? Why is it there? Uh, most likely the person of that, the owner of this bike, they haven't decided where they want the height of this stem. They can always go back at a later date. They can pull the stem off, trade these spacers, put them down underneath, which is gonna raise up your handlebar a bit, and they can go test ride, see if they like it. So, they're still playing with that adjustability, so I'm gonna put everything back in place. And now we can come back with our top cap. And again, if you have any questions about mm, your height here, we have the steer tube is about three, four millimeters below this space right here, and we need that space. You can go back and refer to the other videos we made about uh, installing your fork or adjusting your headset. Top cap has a little bit of grease there. This top cap, it's gonna be tightened very gently. Just finger tighten just till it makes contact. Boom, right there. That top cap is going to put pressure on your bearings. So you want the play out of there so it's not jiggling or making noise but you don't want them so tight that the bearings are uh, really hard to move. So right now everything seems to be moving pretty good. Just a little bit, there we go. Probably two to three Newton meters approximately. So at this point, I got a little, just light pressure on this top cap. That's our preload adjusting cap or nut or screw. And I'm giving it a turn. Right now you would be able to tell if everything is working out okay or if something is wrong. Right now everything feels pretty good pretty much like butter. Uh, if there was a lot of stiffness or you heard a, ch -ch -ch, a lot of noise or scraping, then there's something wrong. Maybe we have a bearing upside down. Maybe we forgot to add, maybe there's a race that uh, fell out or something we didn't see that fell out.